What's up, church? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Welcome, 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 welcome. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I want to welcome all the visitors. My name is Miles. I'm the pastor of the Rock. Uh, we are excited about 2020. A whole nother year, a whole nother decade. Amen. Amen. How about we all stand up and want to say hello to all the campuses out there. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. How many by a show of hands have made a, a New Year's resolution? Raise your hand really high. Really high. How, many, how many of y'all have not made, uh, and are not going to? That's not your deal? Raise your New Year. Okay. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> uh, let me encourage you in a, in a third option. You know, you can you do it or not do it, but there's another option. And the other option is that you look back on something that God has started and, and done in your life last year. And that you say, Lord, I'm going to celebrate what you started and what you've already done. And when you, when you read the Bible and you see, okay, I need to forgive somebody. It, one way of saying this, I'm going to forgive in the future or I'm going to do a diet in the future. I'm going to exercise. And, and nothing wrong with that. I set goals all the time. Uh, the problem is when you, when you add too many things, they become a burden to you. Versus saying, when was I faithful in the past at doing that? When did I do a diet and it worked? When did I work out and it worked? And, and say, Lord, I did it before, you could do it again. And I want to focus on how good it was in the past and live on that victory that, that God has done in your life. Does that make sense to you? And so I want to encourage you just to think about what has God done in my life that worked? And let me focus on and celebrate that it worked. And live on and be encouraged by that and say, Lord, keep doing what you've done before. Uh, with that said, last year this time we started discipleship groups, D groups. Everyone say D groups. Uh, and these are three to five people, gender specific guys or girls and, and that you meet weekly basis or whatever you decide to talk about things that we give you on a weekly basis. You could text the word D groups to 52525 if you want to start one. We would love for you to start one, get one. Jesus called us to make disciples and be disciples and not just attend church. Um, especially when you come to a big church, you can hide, you know, and you're not doing yourself any good unless you be in a, a group where people can hold you accountable, encourage you, pray for you, know your stuff. Um, and we came with a discipleship prayer that we're going to say to the, to, in, a, in a minute here. And this discipleship prayer is something I would encourage you to say every day. And I, when, we, when we read it, I want you to focus on the amount of times it talks about our heart. It's not about me doing things. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to read my Bible. They want me to do all this stuff. It's really about God transforming your heart. Because if God can change your heart, everything else will follow. If you just do stuff out of rote habit or you feel like you're manipulated or forced, that's, that's not the relationship God wants. He wants your heart. And so what we're going to do be doing asking God to change our heart. Give me a heart that wants to seek you, which is going to be the whole month of January. We're going to talk about face-to-face -face intimacy with God. Give me a heart that has a burden for lost people. Give me a heart that, wants to, that can forgive. Okay, and, and, and if God gives you his heart, then you'll be who God wants you to be. Amen. So let's read this. We're going to read this together. It's going to be up on the screen. I'll look over here at the screen. I'm going to read it out loud. Ready? On three. One, two, three. As they do something to disciple, I am in a disciplined pursuit for the heart of the Father. A heart that is being perfected in love for God and people. Father, give me a heart that desperately seeks face-to-face -face intimacy with you. Faithfully avoids that which displeases you. Humbly embraces a kingdom mindset. Values making disciples that makes disciples. Jesus created me a heart that values being guided by the word of God. Gratefully grows in generosity. Nurtures a burden for lost people. Demonstrates a commitment to a spirit-filled expression of my gifts. Holy Spirit, develop a heart in me that gracefully gives and receives forgiveness passionately worships God, is dependent on the power of prayer, serves with humility. Father, with Christ's likeness as my goal and the Holy Spirit as my God, knit my heart with yours. Fill my heart with your passions, motivations, and desires. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Come on. I 
I want to ask them to put the first set of requests up there, the first where it says face-to-face -face intimacy with you. Face-to-face -face intimacy. Face-to-face -face intimacy. <laughs> ah, okay, so there are 12 of these requests. And every single one, there's four there, and then there's four that we ask Jesus to give us a heart for, and there's four that we give, ask the Holy Spirit. The first one it says, uh, you know, go back to the first one. Desperately seeks face-to-face -face intimacy. Everyone say, desperately seeks face-to-face -face intimacy with you. Every month of the year, we're going to focus on one of these themes, and this month is that one. We're going to talk about having face-to-face -face intimacy with God. The, the series is called 24-7. We can have face-to-face -face morning, noon, and night. So that's what we're going to talk about this month, and next month it will be a different topic. So this month is going to be face-to-face -face intimacy. Amen. Lord, thank you so much for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness. Encourage us, challenge us in Jesus' name. Amen. Give someone next to you a high five. Let's see your Bibles. Let's see your Bibles, church. On the count of three, say word. One, two, three, say word. One more time, say word. Turn to Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. I want to welcome everybody. Hopefully you are excited about another decade, another year. Today is the first day of the rest of your life, whether you like it or not. Mark chapter 9. I'm going to ask you a question and I'm going to then ask you to pause before you respond. I'm going to ask you the question and then I'm going to pause and then I'm going to say, if the answer to the question is yes, raise your hand. So I'm going to ask the question, I'm going to pause. Then I'm going to say, if the answer to the question is yes, raise your hand. So don't raise your hand until I ask, <laughs> raise your hand. Okay. How many of you, by a show of hands, I'm going to ask the question. <laughs> How many of you, by a show of hands, want God to do something supernatural in your life this year? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> Pause. If the answer is yes, raise your hand. Okay, keep your hand up. Look around the room. Now, Here's what God wants to do. Keep your hand up. Some of y'all need to work out because that was only 10 seconds. <laughs> it's like you can't be tired already. I'm sorry. Here's the thing. What you're saying is, God, I want you to do something supernatural in my life. And God wants to do something supernatural in your life. But it will only happen on his terms. And the only person to decide if you submit to him on his terms is you. He's done his part. He will do his part. He is 100% faithful. It is 100% up to you to do what you do. The only control in the Bible is self-control. The only control you need to have and that God has given you authority over is you. And so today we're going to talk about fasting. Keep your hand up, please. Some of you all need to work out. Okay, You can switch hands if you're getting tired. Switch hands if you're getting tired. My goodness. <laughs> You know, today's the first day of the year. People come to church on January. It's all, you know, people, and it's going to start the year off right. And then stuff happens. And it's up to you to say, no, I am going to be faithful in what God has called me to do. Can I get an amen? Yes. Okay, you can put your hands down. Okay. okay. You're like, thank you. Okay. Mark chapter 9. I was, um, in 1995, 96, I had a ministry called Miles Ahead Ministries. And we put on youth crusades. And in 1996, we put on our first youth crusade. We had the sports arena. We had never had an event. So we just went for it. You know, the first one's going to be at the sports arena. And it ended up being, you know, 265,000, which at the time was probably like a million and a half now. I don't know what the inflation, what it would be today, but it was a lot. And we had never raised any money. So it was stressful. And we didn't know what we were getting into, but we said, look, we're going to just go for it. And we were trying to just figure out every which way we can make this thing God-honoring and successful, if you will. 
And we were getting churches involved. We were, you know, strategizing what bands, what graphics, all the stuff that we were learning throughout the process. And then I met this couple. They were 50 years old. And at the time, I thought 50 was old. <laughs> but now that I'm not 50, <laughs> going to be 60, you know what I'm saying? I see 50 is the new 30. And 30 is the new 15, okay, you know what I'm saying? Come on now, come on now. <laughs> if you're 30, yeah, I mean 30-year-olds, I'm like, you got a permission slip to be outside? I mean, we, we, you know, your parents know where you're at. You know? And so, um, so but they were 50. And, and, and I was talking to them about the crusade and, you know, we're going to get all these kids. And, and they said, well, do you fast? And I was like, you know, uh, no. They said, well, you should go on a 40-day fast. I was like, well, how many? Like 40 hours? They're like, no, 40 days, and they had gone on a 40-day fast. And I was like, you, and I, again, I'm looking at them as old people. And I'm thinking, if you did a 40-day fast, and him and his wife did a 40-day fast, I could do a 40-day fast. So make a long story short, we, we and our staff and a bunch of volunteers at the time, we did a 40-day fast. We had teenagers doing 40-day fast. So it, was, it was the most incredible 40 days of my life. I've done three total in my life, and then 20, 21 days, 10 days, whatever, 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 three days, one day. Today, tomorrow morning, uh, we're going to start a 21-day fast. Now, understand this. This is something for you and God to pray about and you and God to decide about. But we want to encourage you to say, Lord, I, I don't want anything to be in the way of me walking in the supernatural power and purpose that you have for me. And when we get asked Christ to be our Savior, theoretically, we're saying, God, I belong to you. Everything I am, everything I want, everything I have is yours. That's what that means. Now, many people, especially in our culture, it doesn't mean that to them. It means I'm just going to pray a prayer, go to heaven and go to church sometimes and, and then I'm going to go to heaven. That's not what it means to God. What it means to God is God, I'm yours. The problem is we have social media distractions, we got financial distractions, we got health distractions, we got relationship distractions, we got career distractions, educational distractions, employment distractions, and all this, you know, political distractions, economic distractions. And we're looking at all this other stuff and Jesus is over here going, what about me? And so when you say, I want to walk in supernatural power, the only way to do that is to really be connected to God all the time. Morning, noon, and night. That's why this series is called 24-7. That 24-7, I am locked in Jesus. And so what we did is we fasted 40 days and we ended up having 19,000 kids over two days and, uh, uh, at the crusade that we had. And it was awesome. We ended up doing 15 of them around the, around the world. And it was, it was awesome and God blessed it. But what we did is we said, we're not going to leave anything on the table. We're just going to go all out. So starting today or, or tomorrow, we're going to start a 21-day fast. And I want to talk to you about that because I want to enlist all of you to say, I want to do a, a fast. I want to be part of the fast. Now, in this very, very brief story, Jesus is, is on the mountain of transfiguration and his disciples are down the, the bottom of the hill trying to uh, cast a demon out of a boy. They can't cast a demon out of the boy. And the Pharisees and the, and the religious leaders are arguing with Jesus' disciples. And Jesus comes down and they say, what's going on? He says, well, you, you, I came to your disciples. The father says, I came to your disciples. And they couldn't cast a demon out. And Jesus says, oh, no. Oh. These are my words. I'm tired of y'all. This is he words, his words. You faithless generation, man. And he says, he says, and he casts a demon out. He says, you deaf, dumb spirit, I command you to come out of him no more. And, and in 17 words in the, in the New King James, boom, the demon comes out and the boy is cool. He's relaxed. He's, you know, he's not foaming at the mouth. He's not wallowing on the ground anymore. And, and his disciples bring Jesus in the house and they go, Jesus. And they say, Peter, close the door. You know, John, get the, get the window. Get those people out of here. And they say, Jesus, how did you do that? That was awesome. And he says this in, in Mark 9, 29. He said to them, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. There are some things that will never happen in your life until you pray. And then there's even some things that fasting, God will show you in fasting that you might not see otherwise. And so over the next 21 days, we're going to encourage you to say, Lord, I, I want to walk in fasting. In your notes, fasting separates us from our dependencies. 
if there's one thing we think we need more than anything, I would think, is food. We wake up, what am I going to eat? We prepare the food. We brush our teeth from the food. We think about our next snack. We prepare that snack or lunch. We eat that snack. Then we prepare, think about dinner. Then we eat that dinner. Then we eat a snack after dinner. Then we got to go shop for food. Then we got to clean up from food. And then we go to bed sleeping out. What am I going to eat when I get up? Day and night. And then, and then the food has a physical impact on your body as you go to the bathroom and as you gain weight or whatever. Your food is like constant, constant, constant. And if I don't eat, I will die. And then when you get hungry, after you eat breakfast, about an hour later, your stomach is going, oh, and you think it's, it's going to, if you don't eat, you're going to die. But really what your stomach is saying, what you're eating is going to kill you. But that's another story. <laughs> and, and we're so consumed with food. And, and fasting says, you know what, I got I to gotta, I gotta separate myself from that so I can hear God. And so when these people challenged me, I was like, there's no way. Fasting is an act of self-denial for a specific period of time and for a specific purpose. Our period of time, and you can go long if you want, our period of time is 21 days. Three weeks will end on January 26, 21 days. And the purpose is to have intimacy with God face to face. It's not to lose weight. You probably will lose weight. It's not to change your diet. You may change your diet, and those are all good benefits. If you, I got so skinny, my wife wouldn't hug me. I was like, <laughs> I lost like 20 something pounds. I was like 150 pounds, and I, it was, I, you know, my stuff was baggy. I was looking nasty. Uh, that's all that, you know, that, that happens, but that's not the purpose. The purpose is I want to hear God. Now, throughout the Bible, there's many, many stories about fasting. I'm just going to list a few. They're right in your notes. They fasted in times of war. They fasted for repentance, in repentance. They fasted when facing danger. They fasted for courage. Esther asked the people to fast, her, her family to fast for wisdom and courage. They fasted in times of grief when Saul was killed. They fasted in times of distress. They fasted as acts of self-denial. Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And by the way, when Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights, right after he was baptized, the Holy Spirit came down and baptized him. John the Baptist baptized him in the river. He came out, the Holy Spirit baptized him in the spirit, followed baptized in the spirit. The first thing the Holy Spirit did was say, Jesus, we got to go out to the wilderness. You're not going to eat for 40 days and you're going to confront the devil. Now, why is this so important? Because... You may think, well, I just asked Christ to be my Savior, had a great time at church, and now I'm going to go and my life is going to be great. And then you lose your job. And then you find out that your boyfriend is going to leave you. You're like, I thought God was going to what? You thought God was going to what? It's going to make you holy. And so the first thing Jesus did is he, he battled the devil for 40 days or however long. He fasted for 40 days. That was hard enough. And then he battled the devil and he declared victory over the devil. God will have you face your demons. Oh, yeah. And say, no, 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 I have victory in Jesus. I have victory in Jesus. So, so Jesus fasted 40 days. Moses fasted 40 days. Elijah fasted 40 days. They fasted for wisdom. Paul fasted for wisdom. They fasted for holiness. They fasted to answer prayer. They fasted in mourning. They fasted for spiritual revelation. Elijah fasted uh, 40 days after he called fire out of heaven. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And so we're not talking 40 days. If you want to go 40, go ahead. But we're talking 21 days. Uh, and you know, number two, fasting makes me more like Jesus. When I was, uh, during that fast, you know, we had people come, what are you trying to do? You're fasting 40 days. You're trying to be like Jesus? And I said, yeah. How many of y'all are Christian, by the way? How many of y'all are Christian? Okay. If you hand it really high, just keep your hand up really high. Okay. You, you know what that means? That you're a little Christ. Keep your hand up. Little Christ can keep your hands up for about a minute. <laughs> You're a little Christ. Okay, you put your hands down. That's what it means. So I, I was like, when they asked me a question, I was like, yeah. What I don't want to be is an American Christian. And, and what I mean by that, I'm American, sold out, love it. 
and I'm a Christian. But an American Christian, you took the average, don't read the Bible, don't go to church, don't serve, don't tithe. I don't want to be that. I want to be like Jesus. And we should all aspire not to be an American Christian or, or a Christian, when I say American, our cultural, our cultural Christian. That's what I mean by that. Or a, a rock member. No, don't, don't try to be a rock member. Be like Jesus. Now, we have a certain culture here. That's all great and fine, but be like Jesus. Can I get amen? Okay, great. So um, we have a link to all the information you can get. There's a bunch of books on fasting. You go to our website. There's some information. But here's a general, the general idea. And again, consult your physician. Everyone say consult your physician. Very good, very good. There is a, um, it's 21 days. So if you break it up into three segments, this is one way of looking at it. One way of looking at it. You have seven, 21 days is seven times three. Three times seven is 21. Seven times three is 21. 21 divided by three is seven. Are you all following me? 21 divided by seven is three. Three times seven is 21. So any way you cut it, there's three segments of seven in the 21 days. Seven days, you can prepare your body for the middle seven days, which is where, and, and seven days you can prepare your body with fruits and vegetables and stuff to clean yourself out, and I'll tell you why in a minute. The middle seven days, you can go liquid, if you will. In the last seven days, you kind of can gradually start introducing solid food again. Now, what you don't want to do is stop eating tomorrow. <laughs> and here's why. There is a 30-foot tube... Di your digestive system is a 30-foot tube. It starts right here and ends back there. <laughs> Goes down and then it does this. And then it comes out. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Okay. So it, it, for all of you football fans, and I would imagine that all of y'all watch football every week, um, <laughs> that a first down is... 30 feet. So when you see the guy holding the red pole and there's another guy over here holding the red pole and, 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 and to, you have to go 30 feet or 10 yards to make a first down. Same man if you know what I'm talking about. Okay, same man if you have no idea what that means. What? <laughs> shame, shame, shame. 30 feet. So 30 feet, this is 30 feet. That's three feet, three feet, three feet times ten. Give it a take. That's 30 feet. So basically, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how many feet this is because I, I can't go past this line or I won't be in the camera. So one, two, three, four, five, twice that. That's 30 feet. That's how long your digestive system is. Now, there's food in there. What you don't want to do is just stop and let it sit because that's not good. So you want to spend some time cleaning it out. Now, what's going to happen is when you start cleaning it out and you stop eating, what's going to happen is your body's going to detox. And you may get a pimple. If you're 20, you'll get 40 pimples. <laughs> if you're old, you may get one. <laughs> your breath may stink a little more for a few days. You may get a white pasty on your tongue for a few days. When you wake up in the morning, your urine is darker than during the day. Just notice it. It's, it's, this is very healthy for you to understand how your body works. Because all night, your body has been detoxing, so your urine is very potent in the morning. And it will be dark. And then during the day to light, what happens is after you detox, after three or four or five days of fasting, you'll wake up and it will be clear. Because there's nothing to detox. Your breath won't smell as bad because part of the funk that comes out of your breath is from what you eat. You will stop going to the bathroom because there's nothing to come out. You'll sleep less. You'll see more clearly, hear more clearly, smell. You'll be able to smell in and out from like a mile. It's brutal. I mean, it's brutal. Like, you know, 10 days in, you're driving and you're like, you're like out in Campo or, you know, Alpine and, you, and, and you're smelling in and out from El Cajon. And you're like, and you, you can't even see it. It's just, and then you have this euphoric 
experience of thinking about a double-double with fried, the grilled onions and, you know. But, but, but you could smell stuff. Why? Because all your senses become very sharp, a lot sharper than they are today. They're dulled. What we eat, most of what we eat, most of what we eat, if you eat like the average person, most of what you eat is processed and not good for you. If you go to the grocery store, everything in the aisles, depending on what grocery store, but a regular grocery store, I don't want to kind of name any names, but the, the, the name brand grocery store, all that stuff is processed. Even some of the fruits and vegetables got chemicals on them. And so we're not really giving this temple what God gave us to give it. So when you say, Lord, I'm going to get rid of all of that. And I want to hear your voice. And all of a sudden all that physical, psychological distraction is removed. When I fasted 40 days, my last 10 days... I traveled and spoke every day for 10 days on the East Coast in January. And the last day was in Marion, Indiana. It was like five degrees, literally. And I had lost all this weight. And I broke my fast in a communion service in Marion, Indiana on February 4th, 1996. And I'm traveling carrying my juicer with my suitcase, because that's all I had juiced, I was juicing. And I was for 10 days flying around, speaking in high schools during the day, things at night, and I had lost 20-something pounds, and I hadn't eaten for three, for, well, actually, that was 40 days. And I, I would kneel in my, in my room, and I would pray, and I would open the Bible up, and I couldn't read the Bible. God said to me, that, and hear me when I say this, in that moment, God communicated to me, and this moment right now, I don't want you to read your Bible. I said, what do you want me to do? He said, actually, it wasn't even that analytical. The presence of God was so heavy, I, I just was focused on his presence. It wasn't about information. It was about the person. And I just prayed. Because God says, it's not about you reading words. It's about you having face-to-face -face with me. God doesn't want you just going to church. He wants you to have an encounter with him. He doesn't want you just reading words. He wants you to have an encounter with him. Now, come to church to have an encounter. Read your Bible to have an encounter. Pray to have an encounter. Remember, face-to-face -face intimacy. Lord, I want to speak to you. And this is a way to kickstart that and say, Lord, I'm going to remove all my distractions. What, what, how, how is food going to help me see God? You have to stop eating and then you'll find out. <laughs> because when you remove all these distractions from you, when you remove the distractions from you, by the way, eating food and your eating habits and your consumption, your consumption habits, not even food, it's coffee, it's whatever you drink, whatever you put in your mouth, it's all the, that, that, that has a spiritual component to it. What do I mean by that? How many of y'all drink coffee in the morning? I'm not, now, raise your hand real high. Look around the room. That's like 99% of y'all, right? Okay, so check this out. I drink coffee every day too. I don't have to though. I, 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 I exhale caffeine. I like the taste, right? I could stop. I'm sure some of you, it's not a big deal, but I'm sure some of you can't stop. You're addicted. You have to have it. Now think about this. You have to have coffee, but you don't have to have God. That's called idolatry. So when you separate yourself from that. Now, by the way, if, you, if that's you and you're a caffeine, you've got to have your caffeine. You've got to have your, I'm not going to ask you who you are. You've got to have your caffeine. You've got to have your caffeine. It's an addiction. You will probably find yourself under your coffee table like this for three days. <laughs> that's not good. There's a, there's a spiritual connection there. There is a dependency there that God does not want you to have. You know, well, he, you're just trying to get me. I have no stock in your co in coffee, and you're not drinking coffee. But anything that gets in the way between you and God is idolatry. Anything. Listen, I watch football. I think football is the greatest sport in the world. I think it has a lot of spiritual. All sports has spiritual lessons, and it, it, it has it has meant the world to me. But it's not like God. I I didn't even watch the both games yesterday. <laughs> I, I watched one game and then part of another, and I, I, that's great. I, I, I didn't watch the highlights 20 times. I only watched them 10. 
literally, literally last night, God said, I want you to turn that game off and I want you to, I said, okay. I can't, I can't, I can't let that run my life. I can't run that. So here's the thing, look in your notes. Fasting makes room for more time and power with God, from God, okay. Now, three things, three things to do. What time are you going to spend with God? If you get up at 7, get up at 6. Next week I'm going to give you a, a formula. It's not a formula. A template where you can spend an hour with God. So here's things you can do. Spend an hour with God. Make the hour go by boom. Because you're saying, what do I do for an hour? What do I do for 15 minutes? I'm going to tell you that next week. Next week we're going to talk about face-to-face -face in the morning, the week after that, face-to-face -face in the afternoon during the day, and the week after that, face-to-face uh, -face at night. And not only physically night, but in your dark time. Okay? Face-to-face. -face. So what time are you going to spend time with God? I would challenge you to do it in the morning and not at night. Here's why. There's a tomato frog, a frog called a tomato frog. It lives in Costa Rica. I believe it's in Costa Rica. And it's red. That's what I call it, a tomato frog. And its defense is that it leaks out white poison when it gets attacked all over its body. It just leaks it out, like sweats it. And so something that comes to try to eat it, well, and, and the frog is in the mouth of whatever it's being eaten by, and it goes, hey, I'm getting chewed up. So it leaks out all this white poison, and then, and then you're nasty. The problem is it's all chewed up. This, he already got bitten. So he, I mean, he came in hot. He's hopping with one leg going in one circle like that. <laughs> That's how some of y'all are. You, you get up, you do your day, you fight it, you get an argument, all this stuff happens. And then at night you go, dear God, man, I had a messed up day. He's like, well, if you were to talk to me in the morning, I could have helped you deal with those issues that you dealt with. So here's my encouragement to you. I'm not saying that. I'm a night person, by the way. I'm a night person. I get up early in the morning. I had, I, had to, I, had, I had to accommodate what was best for me and him. So what time are you going to get up? I would encourage you, consider an hour before you get up now. Oh, man. <laughs> Remember you said, I, 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 want, I want a supernatural life. Oh, God, do miracles in my life. I want a six pack. I want muscles. What are you going to do? A sit up? Oh man, I got to do a sit up. <laughs> Hour. Location. Where are you going to sit? Where in your house are you going to sit with your Bible, your pen, your notebook, your journal? If you decide, I'm going to sit right there. I'm going to my living room, my kitchen, the garage, I'm going to sit in the car. I would encourage you not to sit in your bed. I would encourage you not to lay in your bed. <laughs> Dear God, I just pray for a half hour later. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> that worked. That worked. <laughs> so, what time are you going to get up? Where are you going to go and how long are you going to sit there? How long are you going to see God? There's no magic, but I'm going to tell you this. The longer you spend with God, the better you get to know him. How many of y'all ever dated somebody in your whole life? Y'all like, is that a trick question? Y'all like, not raise your hand. It's not a trick question. Let me say this. How many of you have ever met somebody that became a friend and you got to know them? Very good. Yeah, he's like, okay, everybody can say that. Guess how you got to know them? Time. Time. Some of y'all say, well, I pray all day. That's cool. Have you ever had a conversation with somebody and you're talking to them and I did this yesterday. I was on, I was on FaceTime with somebody on the phone and the football game was on. Now, when we first started the call, it wasn't FaceTime. So I'm like... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking and I'm following the conversation. And for some reason, FaceTime popped up. And I'm like, now I got to look at this dude. <laughs> it was like, 
how did this happen? I don't need to look at this dude right now. And I'm like this. And he said, like, it's the, the thing, are you watching the game? I'm like, yeah, man. But let me, if I had a turn because I didn't want to, you know, he, yeah, I was busted. But you have a child conversation with somebody and they're looking over here, looking over here. Say amen if you know what I'm talking about. That's you praying during the day. Dear God, uh, you know, can I have that food, God? Dear God, hey, how you doing? Dear God, I want to double, double. You're, you're, you're overdoing all this stuff. Do that. But give God his time where he has your undivided attention. Three weeks. Three weeks. I'll end with this. I, I, I got high for eight years. I know high. Different drugs make you feel the way they make you feel in different ways. But one of the drugs I took, go into your blood, goes to your brain and tells your brain to release dopamine, which is a pleasure drug that you already have. God gave it to you. The reason that you are enjoying this right now so much is because God, the spirit of God is telling your brain to release dopamine. <laughs> You're like, this is awesome. <laughs> When you take drugs, drugs go to your blood and they go to your brain and say, release the dopamine that you already have. And you go, yeah, man, hey. But it's not the drug. It's the drug telling your brain to give you the pleasure you could already have. When you fast, this is, this is going to trip you out. So, so let me say this. Euphoria, joy, happiness, bliss is from God. When you get to heaven, you're not going to be like, oh, that's cool. They got lights, <laughs> fires, like people are singing. This is pretty cool. Uh-uh. You're going to be out of your mind. You're going to be out of your mind. When you fast and you, you get like this with God and you get closer and closer to God, you're going to be out of your mind. And you're going to realize I don't need that anymore. If, if you realize I don't need coffee anymore, I don't need bonbons, I don't need dessert. You don't need, some of y'all don't need dessert. <laughs> I'm so tempted at restaurants sometimes to go, you don't need that right now. I, I stopped eating dessert like two years ago. I think I've had ice cream three times in the last two years. And two times ago, almost, I, I couldn't even finish it. It was nasty. But with that said, you can say, I don't need that, I don't need that, I don't need that. By the way, I don't need that person to like me. I don't need to be first. I don't need to be right. All these ancillary benefits from this face-to-faceness. So in a minute, I'm going to pray, and here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to pray, and I'm going to ask you to make a commitment. I'm going to fast for 21 days, whatever your form is. And then I'm going to ask you to stand up. Now, I anticipate most of you are going to stand up. We're not going to have an altar call, so I don't want you to worry about having to come down here uh, in all the campuses. But I'm going to ask you to stand up. And you say, yes, I'm in. Remember, in the very beginning, you all said, I, I, want, I, want, I want power. <laughs> well, got it. Do what it takes. So I'm going to ask all of you to bow your heads and close your eyes on all the campuses. Lord, so many people uh, come to church first day to Sunday of the year. I start the year off great. And then stuff happens. I'm going to get in a D group. Get in discipleship. Then stuff happens. But Lord, if we follow through on what you have called us to do, we would see supernatural power in our life, miracles, open doors of opportunity. We would see you move mountains in our life. 
So if you're ready today to start this fast tomorrow and say, listen, I, I want in, I want in. I want you to pray this prayer with me in the privacy of your heart. And then after that prayer, I'm going to ask you to stand. And we're not going to call you forward, but we're going to ask you to stand and declare, I'm in. So pray this prayer with me in the privacy of your heart. If you're saying, I want to do this fast, in the privacy of your heart, pray, dear God, I know you love me. I know that you have great plans for my life. But I know I need to be separated from the distractions in my life. So I commit today to going on a 21-day fast. I trust you will show me what that means for me. But you have given me control only over myself. So I will exercise self-control and discipline, which is the fruit of the Spirit, and deny myself of what you guide me to fast so that I may spend more time with you, face-to-face -face intimacy with you. As our eyes are closed and our heads are bowed in all the campuses, if you prayed that prayer, I'm going to ask you to stand up. And by standing up, you are declaring, yes, Lord, I'm in. I'm in. So on the count of three, if you prayed that prayer, I'm just going to ask you to stand up. One, two, three. Stand to your feet. God bless you. 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 Come on, church. Come on, church. Stay standing. Stay standing. Come on. So I want to declare something over you and then I want to pray for you. Every single one of you is standing. If you say, Lord, Lord, I'm going to do this, I would encourage you, uh, if you don't go to a D group, get in a D group. If you want to start one, text D groups to 52525. But go to the website, fast52525, <laughs> and, and just take it one day at a time. But here's the most important thing. Once you get into it, God is going to show you things he is not showing you now. You, that he, you're going to see things that you can't see now. That's better, yeah, better said. You have to document that. Take advantage of your time, especially 10 days in, 15 days in, 16 days in. You're going to be in a place maybe you have never been. Make sure you write down what he tells you because he's going to tell you something in your fast that when you stop your fast, you're going to feel like you, that God's presence left you, which it didn't. It's going to feel like that. But you're going to forget. So when, when God brings you into that spot, he's going to show you things about yourself, about your friends, about your pursuits, about your perspective that is going to blow your mind. Look for that. That's what this is about. Lose weight, ah, eh, whatever. You'll gain that weight back if you want to. That's not the point. The point is that you seek God and then when you start eating again, don't go back to what you were doing. Say, Lord, I'm going to be a changed person. I'm going to be a changed person. You said you want a supernatural power. Let's go. Lord, I pray for our church. I pray for miracles. I pray people would understand their calling. I pray, pray people would know where they're supposed to serve, that they would start D groups, get in R groups, that they, would, the, 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 that they would give beyond what they ever thought they would give and that they would receive beyond what they ever thought they would receive. They would forgive people. They would have reconciliation in, in relationships, that they would have miracles. Miracles. You said this kind come out with nothing but prayer and fasting. Well, Lord, if we pray and fast, we take you at your word that something's going to happen. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. If God spoke to you during that sermon and you feel like you want to ask Christ to be your Savior, it's as simple as A, B, C. One, admit and accept that you are a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and he died for your sin and rose from the dead. And then confess yourself as a sinner and say, Jesus, please forgive me of my sin. So if you would like to ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior, I just want you to just look at me right now and pray this prayer with me in the privacy of your heart, knowing that God knows you and loves you very much. Say, Dear God, 
I believe that I'm a sinner. I know the penalty of my sin is death. And I don't want to die and go to hell. But I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he died and rose from the dead for my sin. And I confess myself a sinner and ask him to forgive me of my sin. Jesus, please forgive me of my sin and fill me with the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you just ask Christ to be your Savior. We want to know, and we want to email you some resources. So if you just prayed that prayer with me to accept Jesus as your Savior, click on the link that just appeared, and we want to send you some free resources. God bless you, and we'll see you in heaven.